We got Lex. Uh, no, it's it's uh, it's Dan. I don't know where uh, Lex is. Oh, sweet. He should be here in a second. Do you want to actually just text him because I'm driving? Do you want to just text him and tell him we're starting now? Yeah. We can wait. I mean, until nine. Nine is nine. Well, yeah. I'll start now. You know, whatever. I, I, text, I texted him just to see if he's available. Yeah, he'll be there in a second. I don't know what you see of me, but I'm, it's all good. I see you. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm definitely... I love your guys' music, man. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank you so much, dude. I, I, really don't, even know, I don't know how to explain it. Um, it like, my, my heart... Like, when I was growing up, I was a punk rock guy, you know? And yeah, then, you too. Throughout life, I just started loving like this alt nation like alt nation on sirius xm i'm not sure if you and you guys yeah, are of course. very similar to that style of music yeah and i i you know i just fall i've listened to your put your head back like you guys have like thirty six thousand people watch it probably 34 of them was me like, <laughs> <laughs> dude thank you so much man dude, that's i really appreciate so it awesome you know it's interesting thing about that song is like it sounds to me like you, it connected with you and you get exactly what it's about, you know, cause it's not a, it's not really a party anthem, but it's definitely about overcoming those, those feelings of self doubt and like all the stuff we've been dealing with, you know, and it's just about like, you know, recentering yourself and, and getting back out there. It feels like you connected with that on that level. Yes, sir. Good, man. Um, I, we got Alex, Connecting right now? Uh, we'll, it looks we'll like he was on for a second and then he disappeared. Uh oh. I don't know what happened. I'll be here in a second. What are you eating? I'm having uh, yogurt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought it was eggs. I was like, oh man, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're eating your yogurt like you had a fork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Dan. <laughs> <laughs> He's an eater. He's a snacker. I wish yeah. I was. I'm a grubber, man. I don't eat nothing all day, then go home, get super high, and just eat everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to do that, but... Um, <laughs> now you're yeah. an adult. Yeah. Dan just <laughs> eats everything. He doesn't get super high. Mm. It's because like the nature, I guess, of my everyday life. I just I run around a lot, and um, you know, a lot of times don't get have time to eat during the day if I'm doing a lot of traveling, but then I get home, and then I just binge... <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I'll eat a whole fucking container of peanut butter straight up out of the jar. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, I'm, uh, let me see. We uh, Dan, did Lex just text the chat? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Um, let's start with. So I. I do it. Is your, it going to be a video, audio, or what? What kind of interview is it? Um, it's a video, but we're going to translate this to a magazine. Okay, sweet. Um, and the magazine is um, no cover, and we are a California-based magazine, Southern California, um, both print and online. So. Awesome, man. Yeah. Um, the classic. There's nothing like it. Yeah. Talk to me about the day you guys. I, I read a, a brief blurb in your guys' write up about how the day you got the day that our country closed down, you guys were on the you're about to take stage that day yeah yeah um we had we had a show booked i believe in i think it was like march 17th kind of right around the, the time the shutdown was and uh you know it was i guess it was right around the time we we released we were gonna do a, a single release was it for um for living like this right and um it, yep. you know the shutdown happened and that show ended up getting pushed back i think uh about three or four times throughout this whole thing i i, I don't even know what the new the newest date is right now what is the newest date june 15th oh no it's gonna oh, be wow. september 18th oh i thought exactly. you meant for the opening sorry 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was originally. I don't. It was originally. The show was originally March 13th, and it was like two days before that was when the NBA shut down and everything shut down. That was like, and we were kind of yeah, we like, kind of freaking out a little bit and uh, saying we got it. We had to make a judgment call, you know. Yeah. On what to do. And then it didn't matter anyway because everything shut down. So that was it. Just that was done. Was your trajectory going up at that moment? Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. we had just lined up. We had a new video coming out. We had just started getting airplay on our single for Living Like This. Um, you know, and it was, you know, we were planning our next tour. <laughs> we had just come off of our, our tour in, uh, in 2019. Um, so we were really ramping up for a big breakout year for us. You know, there's there was a lot of like amazing stuff that we did the year before. So it was all just kind of like, here we go, 2020. And then it was like, nope, put the brakes on that, you know? Yeah. yeah. So we had to adapt and improvise, you know, uh, just like everybody else, you know, and, and, and kind of shift gears in terms of uh, releasing content and, and, and just just focusing solely on the Internet. And how did you guys adapt? Because um, a lot of a lot of people I've noticed, there's a lot of people who just like, fuck this, we are going to overtake this. And to me, I mean, you guys work with Mark in this uh, on this last song. That's, yep. a, that's a game changer. He, he's written for many of amazing people and, and not even talking about, you know, the killers or Imagine Dragons. I mean, this guy is literally just bouncing around making you know helping and contributing to music any way he can uh how did oh, you yeah. get in or i guess the first question would be is what was the mindset and and game plan after the shutdown and then the second question would be um when you how did you guys end up working with mark so i think like right after everything shut down <laughs> it was, there was no game set, there there was no mindset, there was no game plan, it was shit, you know. Um, my brother passed away from COVID literally a month after everything shut down. So it was like, I mean, you talk about like having a plan and then literally just like, just being grateful that you're alive and not sure what the hell is going on, you know? Yeah. So a lot of things kind of like, it, it was just a confusing time. So it wasn't, it, as much as I wish that I could have been like this, like time of like super creativity, like it just, at first it wasn't, you know, like my brain was like fucking done, you know, like there was just a lot. So coming out of that, it became, you know, a time of creativity. And that's yeah. sort of where put your head back, like kind of like took its focus, you know, moving forward to be this lead song for the record. And so finding Mark was like, you know, I had mixed most of the songs on the record and we just, it was a, it was definitely a dream for us to work with him. So, you know, we, I actually emailed him and, uh, and sent him the track and he was into it. And then he, uh, and then he mixed it for us. So it was kind of like one of those, just like, I mean, how cool is that moments? You know, it was yeah. very cool. Yeah. I'll say this too about, um, about Steve is, you know, I mean, he, he bounced back uh, quicker than anybody anybody else I, I know who have been who have been in the same situation as far as you know losing his brother and and this whole shutdown thing, you know I, I remember specifically that you know once he he kind of absorbed that um, and dealt with that on his own he he came back and he told me that he was twice as motivated to just he said I'm ready and he said I'm gonna do my thing and then we're just gonna go and we're not gonna stop at anything you know he, he i remember him specifically telling me this on the phone so you know it was pretty uh pretty yeah. amazing to see yeah covid it, I, I i for one i want to say i'm um, sorry for your loss um it's it's definitely taken a lot of people you know yeah man um, it's Thanks, dude. it's brutal yeah but you know we gotta we gotta you know, you fight on, you push back, and, uh, you know, we just have to hope for better times ahead and see the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, and that's what this song is about, you know, mm -hmm. it's about, you know, put your head back into your heart, like who you are, just no matter what's coming at you, you know, like to push through, 
and that whole, you know, well, I know that it all could be better. Sometimes when we're alone, we barely hold it together. I mean, that's, that's fucking true, man. We all dealt with that over this last year, you know? Yeah. Um, when you, when, when it, when the mix is sent back to you guys, how different is it from the, like, you're like, oh shit. Like, is there things that, that Mark added to it or took away that you were like, oh, that makes sense. Or that's a good tip to learn from him. Was there any surprise in the mix? Dan, you want to answer that? Um, I, th I think there always is. You know, we had um, our other single uh, mixed by Ken Lewis, you know, who's worked with people like Bruno Mars and, uh, you know, just to name one. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, same same deal with both of these of these people. When we got a mix back from them, uh, uh, th there's something about it that I guess I can't really explain in words, but it definitely was different you know um definitely was we we felt the with the the overall quality just of the song went up um in in the best way he he even sent us i think two separate versions of it um that we kind of went back and forth and both of them were great um both of them were just different and i guess we had to you know we kind of uh sat with it for a while and then decided i guess that the second version that he sent us was good what's he ever going to release that the, the other version? Oh, I don't know. I mean, we definitely picked the better the version. Head, head the, the thing that, like, that, that hit me, like, listening to the mix, you know, was, like, just the way he heard it. Like, we all hear things a little bit differently. So, like, there were things that he turned up louder than we would have ever done, you know? There was, like, le you know, less em emphasis on things that we were putting more emphasis on. So it was sort of like an inverted version of the same song, the same thing, and, uh, and just really well done. So it just, and it had a different, it had a little bit more dancey vibe, actually, because he brought up some of the hi-hats and some of the percussion stuff. So it was, it was awesome. It He's a great. fucking genius, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, dude. I mean, yeah, it was definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, it wasn't exactly cheap <laughs> to get done, but we, oh, it, yeah. it was definitely worth it. It was definitely worth it. And, and as soon as we got it back, I think the first thought that we all had was that, uh, you know, you know we got to do this with, we got to do this with our other stuff, you know, <laughs> uh, like moving forward, we definitely want to do something like this again. It's uh, like you know, he's done Elton John. He's like Dolly Parton's main, you know, mix agent. I mean, Fleetwood Mac, he did all that stuff. So this is the guy who, you know, cut his teeth on the absolute classic albums of the last 20, 30 years and is still on the forefront of, of current music and, you know, and pushing it through. So to have those years that have done Fleetwood Mac, Elton John, you know, Dolly Parton, The Killers, to, to have those years filter our music and, and put it back and present it to us in that light, just just so cool, you know? Like, just one of those great moments. Yeah, I mean, I wish I was good at one thing as, you know what I mean, as he is at, at mixing. I mean, it is, uh, it makes yeah. me hate him a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, I wish I was good at something that good. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, For sure. Talk to me about Solutions. Uh, it's your new album out May 15th. Um, what is some, What are some things to expect from that album? Um, and what are your favorite moments uh, creating it and in the post-production? So I, I'll talk for me. I mean, I think it's, it's a colorful record we really came into our sound working these songs out as we went along. So I think like we really came together as a band with this record. That's, that's what this is. This is like the real coming together of us all to get all four of us working together as a band. Um, and there's, you know, a lot of different emotions, a lot of different uh, feelings, colors, sounds on this. We explored a lot and, uh, you know, it's a, and, and if anything, it's a really good taste of what's to come in the future because, you know, ultimately we just, you know, we're, we're always focused on the next batch of songs. So, you know, yeah, yeah. We're always, we're always like super excited to release material that unfortunately just the way it goes, we have to sit on, on the stuff that we're most excited about for sometimes a year, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, uh, as far as I go, you know, some of my most favorite, uh, 
times of uh, in, in terms of the process of creating the album is just getting together and writing really um uh, there's just mo there's moments of spontaneity you know that that occur and i think when when it's kind of uh the more spontaneous spontaneous it is i feel the more uh the the more the result and and the better uh creativity that ensues you know um we we, we did a couple of uh getaways where we went away to like a lake house um it was almost kind of like a vacation. We go away, we, we, you know, get a bunch of food. We, you know, we have a good time, but we also do a lot of work writing and, um, as a band, you know, a lot of, a lot of the stuff, Steve and I get together in a room, but, um, my favorite moments are when we all get together, uh, in a room together, the, the four of us. In fact, that's, uh, how put your head back in together. I think that was the first time all of us were in the same room, uh, writing a song that was on tour that we got. Together. Yeah. In a hotel room in Indiana. We started writing that song. Well, um, what do you guys have coming up in the next six months? Oh, oh did we just, uh -oh. did we just lose him? I don't see the trees outside anymore. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, within the next six months, um, we're definitely uh, we're definitely continuing to write. That's for sure. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to our show that we have in, uh, what do you say? Was it September? September? Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Um, I mean, a lot of it is it's dependent on the world opening up, you know, and, um, you know, we're, we're excited to be put on a couple of festivals. You know, there's a lot of plans that the, that the label has for us that we're super excited about, but we can't necessarily do yet. But in the meantime, um, it's really, it's, it's about, just pushing the release of, uh, I guess we lost him completely, but maybe he'll be back. <laughs> and hopefully he'll be able to, oh, there we go. Wait, is he coming back? Is that hopefully Jessica? He, yeah, yeah, Jessica? that's his. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, was, uh, sorry about that. We're good. All righty. Yeah, so what do we got that. planned for the next six months? I was talking about, uh, about our show, you know, that's in September. I was talking about, you know, just continuing to push, push your head back and continuing to write uh, a new batch of music. But do um, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, well, I mean, the biggest thing is this record, you know, this is our first full album on Imagine Records through Warner. We're super excited. It's packed with like incredible songs that we're like really excited for people to hear. You know, some of our close fans might have heard one or two of these songs over the last few years as we like release stuff. But for most people, it's going to be brand new and there's just so much great stuff on there. So we're super excited about that. That's, you know, May 14th. And then, you know, we have we've already started writing the next record. So shortly after that, there'll be more songs, there'll be more videos. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can get on the road and get some touring um, when the fall comes and, you know, get out there and get back to live shows. You know, that's, that would be amazing. Yeah. And I'm gonna end it with this question. Um, don't believe in ghosts. What is the meaning behind this name? Dan, do you want to tell uh, well, them? In Ghosts, <laughs> you know, Don't Believe in Ghosts came together before I, I joined the band. And so it's, it definitely was Steve's vision to put it together. But I guess I've, I've, I've definitely talked to him about it enough that I, that I know. Um, don't Believe in Ghosts, it, it, instead of it being more of a literal meaning, it's uh, more about not believing in the ghosts of your past, uh, which, which means that your past doesn't dictate your future. Kind of uh, your fate is what, what you make of it. That's basically the, the message behind it. That's dope. Yeah. John, yeah. I, I just want to tell you that I believe in you guys. I, I We over here, we, we support you. You guys are great artists with tremendous, uh, uh, you know, work. Uh, this, you know, put your head back on or head, put your head back. That is an amazing song. And for sure, you guys are the future, man. So... Thank you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Trust the process. And thank you for everything. Thank you for your time today. Dude, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. My man. Y'all be careful. Be safe out there in New York. You rock, buddy. Thank you. You too. All talk right, to you man. soon. We'll talk soon. All right. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.